I always thought history was a little boring because they, they didn't offer any history about uh, accomplishments of women. And so I think that making my own history <laughs> is as good as it can get. It's great to see y'all. I'm Lieutenant Governor Blanco. I'm running for governor. You're gonna vote for me at school? I believe that people look at the people that they can trust to deliver the kind of government that they want. You have demanded change and we will deliver. As I reflect back over my life, I treasure the many years that I was blessed to serve. I faced many challenges. Hurricanes, any time they threatened my state. I traveled the world. I learned many lessons. We've been waiting for this funding since September. Please do not make us wait any longer. I want us to reclaim civility. You have to respect the individual and you have to understand where they're coming from with their own policy. Each of us has a choice. Anger for the sake of anger, or we can choose peaceful serenity. I recommend serenity. I'm a powerful woman, and I don't say that because I was governor. I'm not powerful because I wield power, but because I claim personal power. And I claim that power to define my personal happiness. I suggest you give yourself that great gift too. When the unhealthy politics has turned brother against brother and neighbor against neighbor, reject the negative, accept the positives. Enjoy this life that you've got, because none of us know the day nor the hour. Make it count. And good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Hummel. Tributes for former Governor Kathleen Blanco continue tonight. Blanco, Louisiana's first female governor, died Sunday after a battle with cancer. She was 76 years old. Tonight in this special report, we'll hear from those closest to Blanco, take a closer look at her historic life and the legacy she leaves behind in Louisiana and Acadiana. The celebration of Governor Blanco's life has now made its way to Acadiana. Let's head out live to Chris Welty over at St. John's Cathedral in downtown Lafayette, where a public visitation is now underway. Chris. Hey Jim, moments ago I saw members of the Blanco family working their way back over to Cathedral Hall. That's where Governor Kathleen Blanco is, where public visitation is happening. And throughout the day, hundreds of people trickling in to pay their respects to the governor. Over the past few days, we've heard from so many people sharing their memories of Kathleen Blanco, including Cece Newstrom. The Newstroms and Blancos were longtime friends who became family and shared so much of their lives together. Newstrom says Governor Blanco stayed strong, even in the face of her her diagnosis. She did not fear death and I think that allowed her to live a, a much longer life because she wasn't waiting on death, she was living a life. And the flags here at St. John's Cathedral are at half staff. And earlier today, I was speaking with some of the security out here at the cathedral, and they're saying that compared to yesterday in Baton Rouge, it's very calm. And this is a reflection of Governor Kathleen Blanco's life here in Acadiana, calm and a sense of peace. Live in Lafayette, Chris Welty, KTC TV3. That visitation will continue at St. John's Cathedral through 8 o'clock tonight in the Cathedral Hall. Visitation will then continue tomorrow from 8 until 10 before Governor Blanco's funeral mass at 1030. Burial will be private. Yesterday, an interfaith service was held for Governor Blanco at St. Joseph's Cathedral in Baton Rouge. The governor was remembered as a strong leader grounded in faith. And following the interfaith service, Governor Blanco's body was brought one final time to the Capitol where she was laying in state. Hundreds lined up to pay their final respects to the Blanco family. Right now there's a lot of peace. Mom is where she was supposed to be. 
she was very uh, much in control over the last several weeks. Um, it was probably one of the most beautiful things any of us have ever been through. Family and friends reflecting on the incredible life of Louisiana's first female governor. Kathleen Babineau was born in Iberia Parish in 1942. The first of seven children, she would go from humble beginnings to a historic election as Louisiana's first female governor. So help me God. <laughs> Blanco was a graduate of Mount Carmel High School. She earned a bachelor's degree in business education from UL, then the University of Southwestern Louisiana in 1964. It gave me the tools to become successful in my political career from the very beginning. It gave me the tools that I needed to become the first female governor of Louisiana. A former school teacher herself, the importance of education came with her to the capital. Education is directly linked to growth and economic development. Indeed, it is poverty's mortal enemy. We can only travel on the road to prosperity if our children and our adults continue to learn. But her term as governor and Louisiana were forever changed in the summer of 2005 by Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. It was a very difficult time. It was a difficult time for those of us who served in government, but it was more difficult for those people who were directly impacted by the ravages of such a fierce hurricane. Blanco did not seek a second term in office. In the decade since, she served in a new way, on boards and committees devoted to improving lives and furthering the values of education, health care, and eliminating poverty. UL created a public policy center in her name. I envision it as the voice of reason, <laughs> nonpartisan reasoning, acknowledging the good ideas from, from both party perspectives, bringing those ideas together and finding suggestions, I think, for compromise and are, are setting the tone for compromise. I think that's the most important thing. But her greatest challenge came in 2017. At the end of October this year, I learned that the cancer had metastasized to my liver. She showed grace in the face of a disease she knew would kill her, imparting wisdom on students at her alma mater just weeks after announcing her diagnosis. Tackle it with zest and zeal. Enjoy this life that you've got, because none of us know the day nor the hour. Make it count. Thank you. Her final public appearance came in July along Highway 90 in Iberia Parish, not far from where she grew up, unveiled as the Governor Kathleen Babineau Blanco Highway. I think that each of us uh, will have challenges along the way if we haven't yet. And each challenge that comes along needs to be met openly and honestly with a good heart and take the best lessons you can get from it. And Make those lessons a part of your life. Lessons she leaves with a heartbroken family and a state forever grateful for her service. And stay with us, everyone. Our coverage continues in a moment. Kathleen Blanco, I think, was successful in her career in elected office because uh, she didn't change her personality and she didn't change who she was. Uh, people knew her as sincere, as authentic, and people knew that she was going to make the right decisions. Whether you agreed on, on her decisions or not, you knew that she was authentic and that she was doing it for the right reasons. Uh, she was successful because people uh, felt close to her and trusted her. Uh, and she's left a magnificent legacy of uh, improved services and conditions for families and for education and, and she'll be greatly missed. 